In this lesson, we're going to be talking about doing some SMB scanning. Now, SMB, or server message block, can be used to gather a lot of information. It's actually how files are shared, how printers are shared, but it's also how systems communicate with one another, and you can do things like get a user list, potentially, or you could get a share list from a system that's doing SMB sharing. We've got the scanners up here. I've done a search for some scanners. What I want to do now is find the SMB scanners and see what we can look for. What I think I want to do here is I want to see if there's some file shares out there that I can potentially take advantage of. I'm going to copy that just so I don't have to type the whole thing. And now I'm going to use SMB enum shares. And again, I'm going to show options just as we have done previously. And I have to set our hosts to be the network that I'm on. Zero slash 24. So I'm going to do the whole network. And now I'm going to do run. I'm actually just going to leave the domain alone and see what we end up coming with. I'm also not going to set the user or the password. I just want to see what we can turn up just by doing something completely unauthenticated and see if we can turn up some shares on the network without providing a username or password. Now, while that's going, we can go back over here and we can take a look at the hosts that we've turned up because we did turn up some hosts that were running SSH you can see that we've actually added a couple of systems here. We've added the system at dot 78 and the system at dot 51. And if I go to services, we should be able to see a couple of new SSH services. And there they are right there, dot 51 and dot 78. This is actually going to take quite a bit of time. Let's go back up and see the other things that we can discover using SMB scanners that are provided by Metasploit just by default. We could do user enumeration and see whether there are lists of users that systems might provide just by poking around on SMB. We could do things like figuring out the domain users. So if they're part of a Windows domain, we may be able to get the domain users. We could do a check for SMB login. We could do local user enumeration. There's local users and those domain users, depending on the type of network that you're on. If you've got Active Directory, for example, on your network, you've got domain users. If you've just got a home network, like I'm working on here, what I would have would be local users because I don't actually have a domain installed. I don't have a Windows server here at the moment. And so I'm not authenticating against any server. Everything is done locally. I can do some checks for DCE RPC, which is the remote procedure protocol. And that's where you've got services that are being shared out using RPC. We've got a number of things that we could be looking for in terms of possibilities for exploitation. Actually, the RPC may be a good one where we could see whether there's some RPC programs and whether there's session pipes that are available that we could use to communicate with those programs. That's another good scanner to keep in mind is the pipe DCE RPC auditor. That's something that we may want to take a look at as well. We'll see here whether we've actually returned anything at the moment. and. It does look like we have actually found a system that's doing some sharing. And it looks like we've got a print dollar and we've got shared docs and of course the administrative shares that are available under Windows XP. And you may remember that the dot 17 is actually the XP system. If we go back to the hosts over here, you'll see the dot 17 is actually the Windows XP system. It's not surprising that we actually were able to get shares off of that system. 
with Windows XP and earlier there were things called administrative shares and those administrative shares were there for administrative users to be able to interact with systems and you could get direct access to any drive that was actually mounted or installed in the computer. We've got C$, dollar, for example, and that's the C drive. And if there were a D drive, you would have D$ dollar there as well. Of course, we've got the remote administrative share, which is admin$, dollar, and the print share, as we mentioned earlier, that's the print dollar that's there. There's another system at dot .37 that's got some inter-process communication somehow that's available. We'll see what we end up turning up as we plow through here. You can see we're actually getting some results. Even without passing in usernames and passwords, we're actually getting some shares that are on these systems that are available. That may be something that we could poke around with and see whether we could actually get access to some files later on. I'm going to let this continue working and we'll take a look at some Nessus results and then start playing around with exploitation coming up in the upcoming lessons.